So I'm ready to create a new sheet set and I've never done it before. So I don't really have a template to go off of. So I'm going to end up using one of the sample templates just as a starting point. But you got to remember as I'm going through this, you might be thinking, oh, there's a lot of picks and clicks and I got to do this and I got to do that. But once you do it once, you can reuse that as kind of your starter template and then you can generate new sheet sets from that. So new sheet sets are created from the sheet set manager and the easiest way to probably launch the sheet set manager is from the view tab and from the view tab you can actually set to launch the sheet set, sheet set manager itself. Now I'm going to go to the drop down at the top here and I'm going to create a new sheet set. Now my option is to either grab a collection of existing drawings but in this case I'm going to create a new sheet set using an example sheet set. Really what this is saying is we're going to use a template to bang out this new sheet set. So I'm going to click next and you can see here that it's asking me to select one from here. So these are mostly just the samples. Like I said, I've this is kind of my first time going through this. Or I can click browse and I can select another sheet set. So any other sheet set I could select as my starter, my template. In this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this manufacturing imperial sheet set as my starting. So what this is going to do is you can see here it's going to create a new sheet set with a default sheet size of 17 by 22 which is okay. I actually want to use um, 11 by 17 but we'll use this as the starting point. So I'll click next and I'm going to give this my, my name so I'll just say that this is my project and we'll say you know this is for me and descriptions just helps you to you know when you're trying to decide which one you should use which one is which you can look at the description now where do I want to save this I'm actually going to create a new folder so we'll just call this MFG sheet sets and we will I guess I got that backwards and that's where we're going to save that information now I'm actually going to create a folder hierarchy based on subsets and this is completely optional. You could use the subsets kind of as a virtual folder so that you can organize your sheets within the sheet set without actually generating subfolders. In this case I do want that. So any sub subset that I add I want it to generate an actual physical folder to store that information. Now I'm going to click on the sheet set properties. And this just prompted me because I put a location that doesn't exist. So I'm going to say yes to generating that location. Now the sheet set properties are important for a couple reasons. One is it creates this kind of sheet set level properties that you're able to use in your drawings. So you can actually link a, an attribute or a field, let's say, to the project number. So that way, you know, all the sheets are referencing the same information. And if you change it at the project at the sheet set level, it will propagate throughout all the sheets in your drawing. So again, all I would do is I would just come in here and I would say, okay, the project number is M1234-A. So again, I'm going to be able to use that information, you know, throughout um, my various sheets. So I could do that with, with any of the properties. Here, notice the name and the description. I'm actually able to select a model view location. So model views will be the drawings that will actually be used to populate the sheets. I can actually add this later and that's what I'm going to do. Which label blocks do I want, which call up blocks, and what page setups. So we'll circle back to this, this area in a subsequent um, video. Here's my sheet location, so it's defaulting to the same location that I, I set to create my project. The sheet creation template, if I click and browse, is really any template drawing that I want to use. So perhaps you know I can't find the one in there that I want, so maybe this is the one I'd like to pull from, because what I really want here is I want my D size layout. Now I said we wanted 11 by 17, looks like I don't have any drawings with 11 by 17 will be able to change this information after. So I'll click OK. So now what I can see is that I've created it. I'm not going to default for the template. So by default, no template. Here are some custom properties. And if I don't see the custom properties that I want, I can click Edit Custom Properties and I can add additional ones. So perhaps what I'd like to have in here is I'd like to have you know, the customer and the default value is going to be 
and you can see the owner right now is the sheet set. So I don't really want to be able to change this particular property on a per sheet basis because the customer is the customer. Or perhaps it's not the customer, maybe it's the, you know, the product type. So click OK and now what we'll see is that is available. And in this case maybe it's you know airplane is what we're going to develop. So really what we're doing here is we're, we're picking our templates. So what do we want for sheets and page setups and blocks? And then we're setting the sheet set properties. So I'm gonna click OK. And now when I click Next, I'm just getting kind of a, a preview. Now remember that I started from a existing named sheet set. So that's why these subsets are, are created. And I'm gonna click Finish. And what it's done is gone out and generated that folder. So if we just browse to that location where everything was, was saved, so now we've got this new sheet set. Notice that all it's created right now is this DST. And this DST is the actual sheet set kind of configuration file. This is what any user on you know my network can go out and use. We can all actually use the same sheet set file and access the same sheet set project. Now if there's a particular subset in here I didn't want, so perhaps we don't want a separate one for subassemblies, I'm able just to, to right click on it and I can actually remove the subset. Perhaps this top level we want to rename. So I'm actually going to rename this one to simply be assemblies. So we'll click OK and we rename that information. Now if I look at my folder or sorry my Windows Explorer we don't have any subset or any subfolders yet. So let's go and add a sheet. So I'm just going to right click on here and I'm going to say new sheet and let's just give this a 00, zero right now because we just want to see what's going to happen um, with this. So we'll call this um, you know this is going to be assembly one and we can see the location. I'm going to click OK. So it's now generated that sheet and now if I go back to Windows Explorer, notice that it has created that drawing. Now if I go in my part sheets here and I'm going to add a new subset, the subset is going to be subcontract. I am going to create a folder hierarchy on this particular case and I'm going to click OK. Let's add a, another new sheet, so we'll call this C1 for subcontract, and we'll say that this is going to be plate plate cutting. I'm going to click OK. And now when I look at Windows Explorer, notice the subcontract subfolder with that particular drawing. So that's how those subsets can tie into that. So that's the process of creating a sheet set. Um, like I said, we're going to circle back in subsequent videos and we'll look at how to set the page setup, how to pick the appropriate title block, um, and how to work with those blocks and such.